positive manner. Profanity, racial or sexist comments, or intimidating actions directed at coaches, players, officials, or any other team representatives will not be tolerated in our grounds for removal. Also, the consumption and possession of alcoholic beverages and tobacco is strictly prohibited. Failure to adhere to these policies may result in immediate dismissal. President Dana and the Southern Virginia University staff, thank you for supporting the student athletes and coaches participating in today's contest. Please stay away from the playing area and team bench areas. Thank you for your cooperation. And go! And of course, the this at Southern Virginia University, we will begin with a word of prayer, which will be offered by Claire Bailey from the women's volleyball team. Our dear Heavenly Father, I'm thankful for the opportunity we have to gather here today to watch these athletes compete. We're so very grateful for all that you have yourself given us, and we ask that all of everyone here will have a safe ride home when time comes. And we love you so very much, and we're so very grateful for that son who lives in the sacrifice, and we say you can be safe to us. Now, if you'll all please rise and face the flag for the playing of our national anthem. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's broadcasting for another presentation of Southern Virginia Athletics with this men's volleyball contest being between the 14th-ranked Scarlet Raiders of Rutgers Newark and your 8th-ranked Knights of Southern Virginia University. I'm Dawson Weider, joined once again by Marion Gowdy for what should be another exciting matchup, the second top 15 opponent for Southern Virginia in the past three weeks. Should be an exciting one, Marion. Yeah, the last one that was ranked that play, we played was Marymount, and that was a very exciting game. So, yeah, I definitely expect tonight to, to be just as interesting. Absolutely. I expect to be very, very competitive. And we just had the starters for Rutgers Newark announced. We had uh, Justin Tui, uh, Josh Ledesma, number 12, Andrew Zalek. We'll talk about him quite a lot tonight, I'm sure. Number 14, Derek Alm. Number 17, Martin uh, Kromelak. Number 21, Daniel Quay. And then for Southern Virginia, you see them being announced right now. Number one, Cristo Bianchi. Number four, Jeremy Brown. Number seven, McKay Walker. Number 10, Tyler Schaefer. Number 11, Christian Schaefer. And number 18, Kyler Evans. We don't see Kyler Evans start often in these games. He does come in and provide a lot of quality minutes, a lot of quality play off the bench. But he's getting the nod for the start today. Now, this game is the second to last regular season game for these Knights of Southern Virginia. The last game being tomorrow at 1 p.m. against Keene University. Both today's game and tomorrow's game being conference games. Now, Marion, you and I were talking before this that the conference shakeup for the CDC is proving to be very, very interesting. Right now, Juniata College sitting at the top of the pack with a 7-1 conference record. 
Southern Virginia just behind them at a 5-1 conference record. We know just about a couple months back that Southern Virginia defeated Juniata when they were ranked number one in the nation. So, you know, we're talking that if Southern Virginia can pull up the victory today against the Scarlet Raiders and then tomorrow against Keene, that would tie them up in conference win-loss record because the next two games for uh, Juniata are non-conference games. And because of the tiebreaker, Southern Virginia having beaten Juniata earlier in the year, theoretically, that would put Southern Virginia at the top of the CVC standings. So needless to say, very, very important games today and tomorrow. Yeah, especially with their game against, was it Stevenson? Absolutely. Their last home game, I guess, was against Stevenson and and their third third set. That's, Very exciting. There's been, that's been the talk of the town for the past couple of weeks. Unfortunately, Southern Virginia, they've been really thinking about it. You know, we've seen it written about on the Southern Virginia Athletic website, talking about how they really struggled over 20-plus service errors in that game, most of them coming in that third set. It was a consistent problem throughout the sweep. But that third uh, set, we really saw it to start to affect the Knights. And so, you know, you and I were talking both after that game and before this one, you can only imagine how practice was following that game, the amount of drills they did with serving. And that came off of a fantastic serving game against Roanoke just a couple of days before. So you have to wonder, is it sort of a rebounding thing where you have a really good game one day, then the next week you just can't get it to go? It just doesn't work out for you. There is momentum is a crazy thing like that in sports. Same thing with either basketball or football. One week you can absolutely be right on the money, do everything right, have no problems whatsoever, and the next week just seems nothing can go right for you no matter how hard you try, no matter how prepared you are. I mean, I have an athletic training background, so you could go into that and think about, like, their weight training and their recovery and their nutrition and their sleep and all that stuff playing a factor into all of these games every time, so... All of it comes together in game time, and we'll see what happens tonight. Absolutely, as we'll start off this one with number two, Justin Tui, the senior from Old Bridge, New Jersey, serving first. First point goes to the Scarlet Raiders. The first pass a little too far. Tyler Schaefer trying to prevent the easy play. Ends up going over the net in the process. So we'll see Tui serve once again. Schaefer special striking very quickly and with a lot of power. Tying it up in one apiece. So now we'll have Christian Schaefer set to serve for Southern Virginia. He has really had a phenomenal year leading the way for Southern Virginia with 222 kills going into today's game. Adding another just then. A beautiful block from Jeremy Brown on the attempt of Andrew Zalik. Number 12, Andrew Zalik, the senior from Old Bridge, New Jersey. He has been the conference player of the week the past previous two weeks and just recently surpassed 1,000 kills in his career. And like I mentioned earlier, Marion, he's gonna be one we're definitely gonna watch out for in this contest. And I know Southern Virginia has had him on their minds in practice this past week. That serve sails far, tying it back up at two. And now number 21, Daniel Quay, the senior from Yardley, Pennsylvania, back to serve. That serve is just short. Gives the Knights back the lead. And we'll see taking the floor once again is number seven, McKay Walker, with Crystal Bianchi back to serve. And I know it's early, Marion, but you look at the energy the Knights have right now. There's a stark contrast between what we're seeing right now compared to the end of that third set against Stevenson. Here's Brown. Great diving effort there from Tui. Ball goes into the scoreboard, and it's tied up once again. Now Andrew Zalek will be back to serve.
Here's Evans. From the back row, Schaefer gets that to fall. That was great serve receive on the night's end. I mean, they were cool, calm, and collected that whole time they were trying to get the ball, and they were just able to communicate really well, and they were reading the ball really well. I'm not surprised they got that point. Absolutely, that first pass from Jeremy Brown was absolutely fantastic. Here's Jaden Hall to serve. Trying to set up number 17, Martin uh, Kromaluk. Set just a little too low. Gives the Knights a two-point lead. Here is Hall once again. And right there for the block is Tyler Schaefer. You know, Tyler Schaefer going into this game has 33 blocks on the season. Very active defensively at the net. Somehow, the Scarlet Raiders able to get it back over. Once again, the Christian Schaefer. I know the Knights got that point, and they did a beautiful job with everything they did with the ball, but I have to point out the effort by Justin Tui there. I mean, very few people would have actually gone for that ball. It was low to the ground, going away from you, but he still made the effort towards it and totally got it back. He I absolutely really, did. I really love that determination in a volleyball player. Absolutely. I mean, Rutgers Newark has not made things easy for Southern Virginia, even though Southern Virginia has had the momentum so far and have made a lot of great plays. Rutgers Newark is saying, hey, you might be making some good plays, but we're not going to lay down for you. We're going to make sure we give you all that we got. Hall gets that through the block. And the Knights take the 8-4 lead. Back to serve now is Jeremy Brown, the sophomore from Mesa, Arizona. Phenomenal effort by Matt Nickishin, but the ceiling comes into play and the Knights get the service ace and the 9-4 lead. And again, just the difference in energy I'm seeing from the end of last game and the start of this one, it's night and day. You feel the bench is more energized, the players on the court are more energized. That just feels like a different level of focus, and I am certain that that was an emphasis this past week in practice. And, I mean, you can tell they're still having fun. Right. But they're focused, and they're getting the job done, and they're communicating, and they're really trying to read that ball and make smart decisions with every touch that they have on that ball. Absolutely, and you know we, we talked about the service issues in the past game against Stevenson, how it was one of the few times we had ever seen uh, Coach Tom Peterson really up and animated about each and every service error. So, again, we can only manage what happened in practice to make sure that they got refocused. But, again, like you said, Marion, still maintaining the aspect of, hey, at the end of the day, this is a game, and we're here to have fun with it. We're here to play well, execute well, and win but make sure you're having fun in the process. And real quick, during this break, I want to remind you, watch this on night's broadcast, and be sure to give us a like, subscribe, comment down below, and let us know how we're doing, and be sure to click that notification bell. That way you get notified every single time we go live with Southern Virginia Athletics. Thank you so much for supporting night's broadcasting. So again, Knights starting off so far with a 9-4 lead in this first set. Back to serve once again is number four, Jeremy Brown. That served just short. Now back to serve as Kromalak. Brown gets that through the block. Makes it a five point lead. Now back to serve as number 14, Curtis Stone. A number of these, of the Knights' hits are going, hitting the blocker's hands, but still going to the other side of the net. So you can only imagine the power behind all their hits. These are very powerful hits that the Knights are coming out with tonight. 
and really shows the Knights outside hitters are elevating as the ball goes over the scores table. The Knights rushing over to try to recover it. There's a conversation having about the score here. I was very tempted to play that ball myself. <laughs> Indeed, it went right over us. And the point will be awarded to the Knights as of right now. There's a discussion happening between the up ref and the line judges here. And it's hard to tell exactly what happened. I, I believe an outside hitter came in and it almost looked like it went off the hand of a Knight blocker, which is why I initially thought it was going to go as a point for the Scarlet Raiders. But I think the discussion is happening if did the ball touch the net only and bounce over. Now we have the down ref going up as well. Want to shout out the up and down refs today. We have Michael and Bonnie O'Connor. Here comes the announcement. And it will be a point for Southern Virginia. And it'll send Curtis Stone back to serve once again. there is Bianchin. It just feels like right now that Southern Virginia at the net is elevating more than the Scarlet Raiders at the net are. Yes, they're definitely playing higher up. Their verticals are a little bit higher. Um, and even just that play, that setter, I don't know if he set it a little bit higher than the play was supposed to go or if the hitter was a little excited so he was early. But there is just some miscommunication, not this past hit, but the hit before. Absolutely, but that one will go down for number 21, Daniel Quay, the senior from Yardley, Pennsylvania. And Quay gets his first kill of the game. He is tied with Kromalak. Great effort there from Nikishin. What an effort there from Awe. And getting through that block is Andrew Zalek. I was wondering when we would say his name because, again, Rutgers Newark likes to go to him a lot. He accounts for a very, very significant percentage of kills for this team with 332 coming into this one. Bianchin gets that one to drop right at the corner of the 10-foot line there. And rising up and seeing that opening. And now back to service number 10, Tyler Schaefer. Bianchin tips it up. Here's Schaefer to Evans. Recovered by Bianchin. And I just have to send it over. Great dig from Schaefer. Matson to Brown. Good dig there from Ledesma. Got ourselves a good rally, folks. Great coverage by Tyler Schaefer there, picking up that tip. They call a double on Bianchin. He can't believe it. Jerry Brown has to come over and sort of calm him down a little bit because Bianchin felt like he had the play. So now back to serve for the Scarlet Raiders is number two, Justin Tui. Net on Daniel Quay. Bianchin gets sort of redemption from the previous play. Now Christian Schaefer back to serve. Great diving effort there from Nikashin. That one sails out. Off hand is Alec. <laughs> the 
Here's Schaefer. Great effort there from Evans. Right there to put it straight down is Daniel Quay. I mean, you love the hustle from Kyler Evans rushing over towards the scoreboard, getting it back into play. But Quay was not phased whatsoever as he is now back to serve. Here's Brown. Gets that one to fall, and that pumps up the Knights. I think Jeremy Brown did a very smart play right there. I mean, their blocks over on uh, record size is getting, but they're getting better. They're learning the Knights' offense, but Jeremy Brown saw the double uh, block up there, so he went around and it went cross court. Here's Alec. Gets that one to drop in the bottom or the back corner there. Brings it back within six. Now is Alec back to serve. That one sails out. That's service error number two for Rutgers Newark. Now we have Jayton Hall back to serve. That one sails out. Now back to serve number nine, Josh Ledesma. The sophomore from Psyche, New Jersey. Walker gets his first kill of the day. Again, great effort there from Derek Gaw to run after it as it was flying towards the scores table. The Schaefer special strikes again. Yeah, that was a little bit quicker of a hit, so those blockers weren't up all the way and fully in position, so he got the inside of, or the outside of the blocker's arm, and it just bounced right on out. That one goes out. Sonra 17, Martin Crumelock wanted a tip call. He thought perhaps that Christian Schaefer had gotten a hand on it. It was very close. But the point is awarded to the Knights. Zalek had to adjust in midair. Wasn't quite able to get the power behind it. That serve just short. I believe that's at least the second service error for Jeremy Brown there. So hopefully he can notice what's going on and correct that mistake. I think on that one he definitely tossed a little bit ahead of himself. Another service error for Rutgers Newark. And he was trying to catch up to his toss and put a lot of power into it and therefore hit it at a lower angle. And we have Curtis Stone back to serve for Southern Virginia as they lead 22 to 12 in the first set. That one sails out. Now back to serve number 14, Derek Awe, the junior from Orlando, Florida. Schaefer gets that one to fall. So far, number 21, Daniel Quay really has had Crystal Bianchine's number. He's been done a great job of keeping track of him, keeping track of his movements, and being able to get in front of his hits. 
kind of frustrating Bianchi in a little bit, but fortunately for him, they're able to recover with Schaefer on this near side. Beautiful block for Schaefer and Bianchi. Makes it set point. With now Tyler Schaefer back to serve. Bianchi gets the hand on it. But it'll go down for number two, Justin Tui. Actually, I believe that was number 14, Derek Aw, who got that kill. And now it's Tui who will serve. Which I have to add, the fact that his last name is Tui and he is number two, very convenient for us <laughs> commentators, very considerate of him. <laughs> Indeed it is, as Christian Schaefer gets that one to fall, and the Knights take the first set 25 to 14. Christian Schaefer finished that set with six kills alone. He was followed by Bianchi, who had two, and Jeremy Brown, who had two. And for Rutgers Newark, you have Andrew Zalek with two, Justin Tui with one, and Martin Kromalak with one. So again, Southern Virginia really came out with a lot of great energy and was able to utilize that. They served a lot better, I feel like, so far in this first set compared to sets in the previous game against Stevenson. And it just feels like, again, that it's a, a different Southern Virginia team so far here today. But again, we've seen some great plays, some great middle blocking from Rutgers Newark. Again, I'll point out Daniel Quay and how he's kind of been able to sort of contain Bianchi a little bit on that inside. So the Knights really had to approach from the outside more often. And we haven't seen a whole lot from uh, McKay Walker so far. He had the one kill about halfway through that first set. But again, that's the strength of Rutgers Newark right now is that middle blocking game. And maybe they can try to rely on that, maybe try to get some more hits in that area of the floor. We'll see how they change things up to give themselves an advantage in this second set. Yeah, just like you were saying that uh, Daniel Quay, number 21 for Rutgers, they, I mean, he really has, just like you were mentioning before, has Bianca in his sights. He's trying to shut him down tonight. He, you were saying that Bianca only had two kills on his stats tonight, he has hit a lot more often than that. Absolutely. He's been targeted very, very often. But again, like we said, Daniel Quay has been there. And during the short break, we want to give a shout out to our athletic partners, Straws, Drinks, and Eats here in Buena Vista, Virginia. If you're visiting the Buena Vista area, whether it be to visit this beautiful campus or to visit the beautiful sites in the Blue Ridge Mountains here in the area, be sure to go stop by Straws, Drinks, and Eats. I had the pleasure of taking some of my family to Straws, Drinks, and Eats for the first time this week. They absolutely enjoyed it, so I believe you people will too. So Straws, Drinks, and Eats, thank you so much for partnering with Southern Virginia Athletics. We appreciate you. So again, we talked about the elevated energy for Southern Virginia, and we've talked about the conference implications of today and tomorrow. Obviously, as a well-coached team should, they're focusing on today primarily. They're focusing on getting the job done, make sure to take down the number 14 team in the nation in Rutgers, Newark. But again, home court advantage, whether it be here or like in seasons past where the Knights have had the top seed, they've had to go play it in the local Rockridge County High School gym due to the ceiling that they have there. Either way, home court advantage for Southern Virginia has been huge because you look at their record so far this year, they have yet to lose a home game. They are 7-0 in front of their home crowd in their home gym. And so you know that they have seen that scenario. They're looking at that and paying attention. Again, they're focused on today's game primarily, but they're thinking, hey, if we can get in our front of our home crowd for the conference tournament, smooth sail from there, or at least theoretically speaking. Yeah, the Knights fans definitely bring energy and enthusiasm, and they love they love a good volleyball game. So definitely bring an awesome atmosphere into this barn. Absolutely. So we'll see how Rutgers Newark is able to respond after that first set where the Knights really had the momentum almost the entire time, despite some good play from players like Tui and Quay. I, I have to say I am really impressed so far with the back row for Rutgers Newark, especially Libero number eight, Matt Nickishin. He's had some great dives and serve receive and great digs as well. Honestly, there are a lot of plays that Rutgers had in that first set that they would not have had were, were not for him. Another example being right here. Unfortunately for the Scarlet Raiders, 
You had Kyler Evans, Christian Schaefer, and Crystal Bianchi right there, a triple-decker wall, if you will, as the Knights get the first point of the second set. Here's Tyler Schaefer. That one just sails out, tying it back up at one. Serving now is number 14, Derek Ayu. Or Ayu, excuse me. Evans gets that to fall. So once again, the Knights starting off strong offensively from their outside hitters. Now back to serve number 11, Christian Schaefer. Sophomore from Palmyra, Pennsylvania. Beautiful block from Jeremy Brown. Walking away like it's no big deal. Yeah, but he also has his teammate Justin Madsen there celebrating <laughs> thoroughly for him. I don't know what is even the word there. Exuberantly for him. <laughs> I mean, I feel like most of the plays like that, all the emotion that those outside hitters or blockers would have is transmitted into Justin Madsen and his expression. Great diving effort there from Nikishin. Brown gets another one to fall. Brown now brings his kill tally to three. Moves up to second place in that statistical category for the Knights. Athletic staff making sure a part of the floor is wiped down. And here's Christian Schaefer once again. That served just a little short. Now back to service, Tui. And like you said, Marianne, again, him, him being number two, I'm sure that was intentional. I'm sure he's had that number his entire life in most sports. I just want to put a little E on his jersey after the two. <laughs> <laughs> that serve from Tui just a little far. Gives it back to Southern Virginia. I mean, in that situation, you don't even need names in the back of your jersey. Just go by your number, and it's accurate. And it'll go out off of Rutgers, Newark. Saw a great decoy there from Daniel Quay. Very, very convincing. But unfortunately for them, McKay Walker was not convinced. Here's Bianchi to serve. Phenomenal effort there from Zalek. Here comes Evans. That's one of those plays where you thought Tyler was going to tip it or push it to the other side, but he totally tricks everybody and sets up Kyler Evans, I believe, number 18, and it sails right to the floor. It absolutely does. That's, that's the mark of a fantastic setter right there is when not only can he pass accurately in the block for Kyler Evans as well, back-to-back -back phenomenal plays for the sophomore from Gilbert, Arizona, and timeout for Rutgers Newark. Again, these outside hitters specifically, I mean, the roster overall, but the outside hitters specifically feel like they came here with a purpose. They came here today ready to play. And it's shown right now as they have a six-point lead here in the early goings of this second set of the CBC conference matchup. Again, the Knights trying to battle their way to a first place in the conference scenario, trying to get home court advantage for conference tournament play, make it easy on themselves to try to get into the national tournament. A place this night's men's volleyball team has been a number of occasions during its short history. The 
And so we'll see if Rutgers Newark is able to change things up after that timeout. And Crystal Bianchi will be back to serve. He is tied with Jeremy Brown for second on the team in kills with three to his name. We haven't seen a kill from Christian Schaefer so far in the second set. He still has the six that he acquired in the first set. Blocked by the combination of McKay Walker and Kyler Evans. Derek Ayu had a pretty stellar set there to Daniel Quay, but again, these Knights blockers have been on point today. Waiting on the call here. I believe it was Jeremy Brown who got a hand on that one as the line judge on the left side is coming to talk to Michael O'Connor, the up ref. Here's the call. It will be awarded to Southern Virginia. As they're gonna say that it was tipped. I believe it was tipped by number 12, Andrew Zalek. And then it went out of bounds. So the Knights now with an eight point lead here. The communication between Ayu and Zalek was just not there. Volleyball is one of those games where if everything goes right, it's so fast, it's so quick, it's beautiful dance, really. But if it goes wrong like that, it's just and a misserve like that. <laughs> it just shuts down real quick. It absolutely does. It's one of those where and again, it's a, a huge momentum game, too, where any given moment, that beautiful flow, that dance, like you said, can come to a halt, and all of a sudden it can just look very ugly for a second. You just kind of have to recover and get back to what was happening before. That serve from Quay is just short. I almost feel like in this game, there's like, we have some really great rallies in a row, and then we have some service errors on both sides of the court, back and forth for couple times and then they have a few good rallies so both teams I feel like are I don't know what the service error stat right now is but I wonder if it's similar right now it stands at Rutgers Newark with five service errors and Southern Virginia with nine so a total of 14 combined but I think you're right it definitely feels like there's great ball being played for a good amount of time and then a service error then a service error Good pass from Hall. Brown met Ayu at the net. They're going to say that Ayu went into the net. He can't believe it. And another point awarded to the Knights. So now Jeremy Brown back to serve as the Knights have a nine point lead. McKay Walker right there, two times in a row. A great block that time for number 17, Martin Kromalak. Both front rows of the teams were showing off what they can do. I think that whole rally was almost all front row players. For Southern Virginia, it was almost all McKay Walker. I mean, he was involved in every single touch. Now back to serve is number 11, Aiden Apito is the first one we've seen him on the floor. The sophomore from Totawa, New Jersey. And now we'll see Curtis Stone come onto the floor for the Knights to serve. That is the Knights' 10th service error. 
Brings it back with an eight and sending number 17, Martin Kromalock, back to serve. Great pass from Matson. Bianchi with the no looker. He's facing one way and he's hitting basically behind him. It's such an impressive thing to witness when it works. It's almost like in the NFL, Patrick Mahomes, he has the no look pass and it looks like very similar to that. And they even pulled him. They usually, he's usually hitting right in the middle of the court, but they pulled him over to the right a little bit. So it threw off the blockers as well. It absolutely did, but that one will go down for Justin Tui. As I believe Kyler Evans had jumped just a tad too early, so he elevated the ball up in the air, and it flew past Jeremy Brown in the back row. And I call a lift on Schaefer. So that'll send Derek Ayu back to serve. Somehow that worked out for Bianchi. I mean, that first pass, Schaefer really had to run and track that down. Past two plays, the Knights have struggled to get a solid first pass going. Now back to serve number 11, Christian Schaefer. That one just out. That makes service error number 11 for Southern Virginia compared to Rutgers, Newark's five. Christian Schaefer flies in from the back row. It's one of those blink and you miss it type of plays. One second, Christian Schaefer's rising up to the air. The next second, the ball is somewhere over there in the stands. I mean, it's hard to answer that kind of power with, from a hit just by setting it. Okay, Walker puts that right back down. <laughs> Seeing some laughter here on the floor after that play occurred. Hopefully McKay Walker can compose himself for this next rally. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely had a hard time stopping laughing after that one. That one sails out from Quay. But I have to admit, when I'm playing volleyball, sometimes sometimes things happen, they just hit you the right way, and you just you get the giggles. And it's so interesting to see how volleyball, it's such a competitive sport. High flying, you know, you have all these great plays that are happening. But I feel like volleyball, both men's and women's, over any other sport, you see a lot of good uh, talking back and forth, good conversation, fun jokes, making sure and people, you know, making sure the other team's okay. Like, just a lot of sportsmanship that happens in volleyball, I feel like, in comparison to a lot of other sports. I wonder if it has to do with the fact they're not running around on a field right next to each other and pushing each other and stuff like that. I wonder if the fact that they're separated by a net I wonder if that helps. <laughs> this whole mentality of, that's your bit, I'm in my bit, we're fine. And that you can show respect for great volleyball on either side of the court, but I think it makes it easier that they didn't push each other around like in soccer, lacrosse, football, those other sports that you're mixing all around on the field the whole time. That is absolutely true. And now number 21, Daniel Quay back to serve. Okay, Walker. Drops that and diving for that one was Quay, but Brown rose up and threw it down into the back row. I mean, Quay recovered that one impressively, but it went just over the net. And we've seen Jeremy Brown take advantage of plays like that time and time again. He's the one guy that you don't want to send it right back over to when he's at the net. I mean, I just have to give another shout out to Quay there. He really did do a great job, but then Brown just had to take advantage of their def defense out of, out of whack there. But yes, great play all around. That one goes down for number 11, Aiden Apito. Makes it 21-11. 
Now with number 12, Andrew Zalek back to serve. Serve is just short. And you know, we talked about how Daniel Quay had done a great job at make, like containing Crystal Bianchi in the middle blockers in that first set. I feel like overall in these first two sets, the Knights have really done the same exact thing to Andrew Zalek. Again, he just surpassed 1,000 kills in his career. That one goes down for Apito. But again, he only has two kills so far in today's game. And he's had games in the past where he's had 14 kills, 10 kills, or even eight or nine kills and been able to have consistency there. So far, it's been really difficult for him. Walker rising up, dropping it right in front of Apito. So now two points away from a victory in this second set for the Knights with Curtis Stone back to serve. That whole approach kind of felt off to me, honestly. I feel like it took a step and kind of had to hesitate a second. The toss felt a little low. But of course, Curtis Stone has done a lot of great serving this season. I mean, there's a reason why he's put in specifically to do so. He's very reliable with that. That's a service ace for number 17, Martin Kromalak. That is the fourth service ace for the Scarlet Raiders. Another kill for Bianchi right in front of Zalek. Set point for the Knights. Tyler Schaefer back to serve. That one just short. That is Tyler Schaefer's second service error. I feel like those service errors are a little bit more pronounced at this point in the game because, I mean, we've had two service errors. And if we've, in the past, what, three points? And we would have won the game by now if we hadn't had those service errors. Absolutely, but that wins the set there for Christo Bianchi with that block. The score is 25 to 15, whereas the first set was 25 to 14. And you know, again, Southern Virginia won the first set by 11. Then they win the second set by 10. But the score doesn't feel that way in a lot of these sets. It honestly just feels, it feels more competitive. And I just feel like the Knights are getting a lot more things to fall their way. But you're absolutely right. The service errors are something that the Knights are really going to have to look at in the next coming weeks, especially with conference tournament coming up. And if they want to advance far into the national tournament, that's you can't shoot yourself in the foot and expect to continue to have positive results. Again, talent, skill, and coaching will only get you so far if you don't have one of the fundamentals. I mean, we've talked about how the serve literally starts the play, right? It's like in football where you start the play by snapping the ball. If you can't consistently snap the ball to get things started, it's going to make it really difficult for you to do positive things on the field or on the court. But like you were saying earlier, um, with the scores being what they are, like 25 to 15, 25 to 14. When you said that the score earlier was 21 to 11, I was completely shocked. I hadn't even looked at the <laughs> scoreboard for a few minutes, but I was like, wow, I'm surprised that it's not a lot closer than that. Like, I'm surprised that Knights are up by 10. But I, knew, right. I knew that was your reaction. I could see out of the corner of my eye that you were a little surprised. I, again, I don't blame you just because, again, it's it just felt very competitive both sides and again a lot of the things that Rutgers Newark has been able to do is take advantage of times when Southern Virginia has given them something to work with you know when they've not been able to get a solid attack at the net when they haven't been able to get a solid serve Rutgers Newark again is taking advantage of those things but again for Southern Virginia it's just they have 10 more assists their hitting percentage is much higher Southern Virginia is right now sitting at 50, uh, 564 compared to Rutgers Newark's negative 184 that's really working out for them. Again, right now the story of the game is hitting on the outside. Middle, middle blockers have gotten some good hits here and there with Crystal Bianchi and McKay Walker. But again, with people like Christian Schaefer 
and Jeremy Brown on the outside, that's been the story. Relying on those, they've been able to find those lanes to hit into, and it's been very, very impressive to see. But real quick, want to remind you, watch this on Knights Broadcasting here on YouTube. Be sure to give us a like, subscribe, comment down below. Let us know how we're doing, and be sure to click that notification bell that we get notified every single time we go live with Southern Virginia Athletics. want to remind you that we have another men's volleyball game here on Knights Broadcasting tomorrow at 1 p.m. versus Keene University. It's the last regular season game here for the Knights, so you are not going to want to miss that. But, of course, got to take care of business here first to start off the third set and potentially the final set as the Knights look to sweep yet another top 15 opponent. They had done the same thing to Marymount a couple weeks ago when they were ranked, I believe, number 15, or I believe number 12 at that point. So I'm going to do that for the second time in just a couple of weeks. But to start things off, serving will have number two, Justin Tui. <laughs> Tui has one service ace on the day with one service error, has two digs and two kills. Here's Evans. And that is out clearly off of number 12, Andrew Zalek. And the Knights take the first point of the set. Now Christian Schaefer back to serve. Schaefer had two kills in that second set, bringing his total to eight. Diving for that one is Madsen, but that'll go down for Zalek. You were listing off uh, uh, Tui's statistics from Rutgers. He is all around the court, and they are now using him as the setter instead of, um, I think, I believe it was AU, IU. Yeah, uh, IU, yes, yeah. Uh, last... Set, last two sets were their, was their setter, but now they're using Tui as their setter. He just seems like a great, versatile, utility player. One of those players that coaches absolutely love. He's one of those where you can say, hey, I need you to do this instead of what you've been doing. He's like, you got it, coach. And it's interesting you mentioned that. That was a similar thing that Stevenson pulled last week in Southern Virginia. And we've mentioned how much of a struggle that third set was for Southern Virginia. So it makes you kind of wonder, will we see a sort of repeat in history where a change in the rotation affects Southern Virginia? And that was a fantastic block there for Andrew Zalek as it ties things up at two. Two great players there battling at the net. Zalek versus Brown. Zalek got that one. Now back to service number 21, Daniel Quay. That one sails out, gives the Knights back the lead. And now we'll see number 15, Jaden Hall, back to serve. And again, the question now, now that, we, now that we've drawn that comparison between what's happening in this third set compared to the third set against Stevenson, the question is how fast do you adjust? Do you let it bother you? Do you let it linger for a while while you're trying to figure things out in your mind? Or do you make sure that, hey, we know how to play, We've seen this player throughout the game so far. That's going to be a point for Rutgers Newark. But that's going to be the big question. How fast can you adjust to that difference in rotation? Now, but oh, go ahead. We saw how the third set went with Stevenson and went into, what was it, 33 to 31 is the final score. One of the most ridiculous final scores in the third set I think I've ever seen. A little bit of pinball happening there on the side of... Rutgers Newark results in four hits. But they all are very low. Lots of determination to try to get that ball up. Absolutely. Now we have Jeremy Brown back to serve for Southern Virginia. Tipped up by Tyler Schaefer. That one goes out. Goes down to the kill for Christian Schaefer. Great power behind that one. Brown able to keep it alive. Okay, Walker rising up after that quick set. 
know that's an experienced middle blocker when they're out of system so much, but he still is able to be in the right spot. Because being that middle blocker, it's very hard to be in the right spot <laughs> on the court, even in just good plays. But being out of system and still in the right spot, McKay Walker did a great job and communicating also with Absolutely, that. and that's another service error for Southern Virginia. You mentioned it's hard for middle blockers to be in the, in the right spot. I feel like middle blockers, it seems like a, for everybody else, they're in the wrong spot. They're in the way of a lot of people because they, they have to be there where they, when they're positioned. And that'll, Madsen diving in to save that play. Here's Zalek. Zalek with a great dig there and Madsen keeping it alive. What a rally we have here. That went into the net and the Knights survive a fantastic rally. Madsen, I, if you're gonna give an MVP of a play award, Madsen, you won that one. Madsen in his knee pads, <laughs> came in clutch there. Absolutely did with McKay Walker now back to serve. The ceiling coming to play there, Tui. That one goes down for number 17, Martin Krumalak. But again, you mentioned that middle blocking situation. I know my wife played here at Southern Virginia for the women's volleyball team. She's told me plenty of stories about how sometimes setters would just kind of shove them out of the way in order to get them in the right position because it always feels like you're in an inconvenient spot for everyone else. Hall with the hesitation. Tear drops it over the net. Now back to service, number 10, Tyler Schaefer. As Knights now have an 8-5 lead. I feel like right now this score better signifies the competitiveness that has been the first two sets. Again, we mentioned the first set being 25-14 in favor of SVU. Second set, 25-15. Right here, 8-5. That, that's, that's more resembling of it. Now 8-6. That's even better, in my opinion. Yeah, it really has felt, felt way more equal than the score has shown in past sets, so I agree. Now we'll have Justin Tui back to serve. That serve just a little too far. Make that service error number eight. Rutgers Newark yet to be in the double digits in service errors. I feel like we're in that bout of service errors. Now we're about to get some, some good rallies, I feel. Hopefully so. Now that there's number 11, Christian Schaefer, back to serve. Zalek with Jeremy Brown right there. They're going to say that Brown went into the net, I believe. He can't believe it. So the point will be awarded to the Scarlet Raiders with number 11, Aiden Apito, back to serve. Evans gets what I, what I call a revenge point. When you feel like a point doesn't go your way in the next play, you immediately get it right back. Now back to serve is number one, Cristo Bianchi. Bianchi so far has five kills. And it was tipped at the net. So that goes down for Zalek. Brings it back within two. Now we'll have Daniel Quay back to serve. We haven't seen a whole lot of plays from him since midway through the second set. Great diving effort there from Ledesma. I think that's actually the second pancake I've seen from Rutgers. I can't remember who got the first one, but pancakes are not that common <laughs> to get. So to get two in just the same game is 
that scrappiness right there. It absolutely is. I'll tell you what else is scrappy. That kill right there from McKay Walker. A great set from Tyler Schaefer. A quick one, too. Now with Jaden Hall back to serve as the Knights have a three-point lead. Madsen diving for it. Walker once again. I feel like both teams were all over the place in that rally, but Walker totally took advantage of the quick set and sent it deep so the because the Rutgers defense was pulled forward on all those crazy other plays, but he totally took advantage and saw the empty spot on the court. Great play. Absolutely. Now the Knights have a four-point lead here in the third and potentially final set. And, you know, these two teams, there's a reason why it feels as intense as it is. One, both teams have a lot of great players on the roster, both very, very well coached, both very successful programs in the top 15. We've mentioned this. But also concerning the fact this, these two teams have had quite a good rivalry over the past couple of years with Rutgers Newark taking the last two games over the past year and a half. Yeah, back uh, March 25th of 2022, Rutgers Newark defeated Southern Virginia in a sweep. And then April 9th of 2022, they defeated the Knights in a 3-1 win. So they've won the last two games. And so for Southern Virginia, they're thinking to themselves, hey, you know, we're, we are a younger team. We've talked about their youth a bit here so far this season. But they know, hey, they've had our number the past two times we've played them. Let's get it back. You know, they, they know what they're capable of and be able to get that. And again, being a conference game, it's even more important to them. It's like, hey, conference opponent, you've lost the past two times. We're again this time. You, you just feel that adds to the energy here tonight for Southern Virginia. I mean, I was looking at the roster, and only out of the starters in the first set, out of the starters, all of them were seniors except for two players, whereas the starters in the first set for Knights, I would say... Yeah, McKay Walker, the one senior. Yeah, most of them were sophomores. <laughs> so you have a lot of experience over on record side, just just over the years as for playing. And so now we'll have number 12, Andrew Zalek, back to serve. Good effort there from Tyler Schaefer to go up and try to block the hit from Kromalak, but it ends up being a point for Rutgers Newark anyway as they bring it back within two. There's Brown. Walker gets that one to fall. Walker now with six kills. He takes over the second spot on Southern Virginia's side of that statistical category. He's followed by Crystal Bianchi and Jeremy Brown, who each have five apiece. And now Jeremy Brown back to serve. The hit from Cromelock sails out. What a recovery there from Ledesma. What a play there for Tyler Schaefer rising up, even with the blockers in front of him. And honestly, I feel like this both team's done a great job at backing up the people at the net, keeping plays alive. And again, plays like that are not easy to do. Yeah, there's been a lot of balls on the Rutgers side that are low and close to the net, and those are just tricky balls for anybody to recover, but they've done a great job at getting those. But then, yes, on the night side, when we have our blockers up, there seems to always be someone right behind them to cover those tips and whatever comes through those blocks, if it does. Absolutely, as that one goes down for Southern Virginia once again. Beautiful block there from Christian. Schaefer, 
Hey, yeah, Christian Shaver and McKay Walker, my gosh, that went straight down. It's just, it's just good volleyball. I mean, it just makes me happy. It's good volleyball. <laughs> it's so fun to watch. I love it. That's just that's how you draw up a block like that when it goes straight down. Like honestly, if if you folks watching back at home can see Marion smile right now after that play, that just shows you how fantastic that was. Just so good, so good. Of course, that point goes to Rutgers Newark with number nine Josh Ledesma back to serve. How do you like your Shaver special? Shaken, not stirred. Straight down to the, uh, the court. Oh, so good. Now the Knights have a seven point lead here, 18 to 11, with senior number seven, McKay Walker, back to serve. It'd be kind of fun to know what Christian Schaefer's vertical is, because I feel like there's been a number of plays where if his hits didn't go straight to the floor, they were like bouncing off of the blocker, like the top of the blocker's fingers instead of like into the blocker's hands, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So it'd be kind of fun to know if he's ever measured. I'm sure he has at some point, but it'd be interesting to know what his vertical is that's compared some, to others. That's some good homework for us as well as that's to be able to accumulate that over the next couple of days. That sir from Walker sails out. Brings it back to a seven point game with number 17, Martin Kromalak, back to serve. Point Southern Virginia. I believe they're going to say that Daniel Quay was in the net. So Tyler Schaefer back to serve, and Kyler Evans will come back onto the floor. The Knights just five points away from completing the sweep over the 14th ranked team in the country. Schaefer rising up, throwing it down. That puts him at 10. Tyler Schaefer to serve once again. And you know, one thing that stands out to me with that when I'm looking at the kill stats specifically right now is a conversation I had with Coach Tom Peterson at the beginning of the year. He talked about having diversity as far as your ability to attack on offense. You're looking right now, Christian Schaefer with 10, Bianchi with 5, Brown with 5, McKay Walker with 5. I mean, they really have been able to have that offensive diversity to attack from any which angle. And again, that being the goal at the beginning of the year, so far they've accomplished it. Yeah, I mean, having that diverse diversity in attack and so much in that depth in attack, it's just so much harder to defend that because you, the defense on the other side just, I mean, it just throws them off because you just never know where it's going to go because it could go anywhere with this team. That one goes down for Christian Schaefer. Make that number 11. So another fantastic dig, though, from Justin Tui before the end of that play occurred. Christian Schaefer to serve. That serve into the net. Makes it 22 to 14. Now with number 11, Aiden Apito back to serve. It's getting to that point in the game when the service areas get a little bit more pronounced for everybody. A little bit more noticeable. And Tom Apito, he came into this third set, now has four kills. He's really put in some great work for them in this third set. And that goes down for Kyler Evans. And the Knights now two points away. At the beginning of this set, we were saying the score even evened out to what it feels like in the gym right now. But once again, they've, I don't know what the final score will be of this set, but once again, we're back up with the Knights in the 20s and Rutgers in the teens. Goes down once again for Christian Schaefer. Christian Schaefer now with 12. We talked about how in the first set he had six. He had only two in the second set. And he's come back alive here in the third now with set point. Crystal Bianchi serving.
Here's Brown. Great block that time from Quay. You just knew that the gym was about to erupt if that was going to go well for Brown, but Quay basically stuck his finger up and said, uh-uh-uh, not right now. Now Quay to serve. Here's Evans. Yes, yeah, that one to fall, and the Knights are victorious over the Scarlet Raiders of Rutgers, Newark. Same score as the second set. The first set was 25-14, then 25-15, then 25-15 once again. The Knights just, aside from the sort of excessive amount of service errors, which they ended up with 20, still in the 20s, which is definitely not where you want to be. Other than that, it felt like the Knights played a lot more of a complete game today. They felt very energized and very focused. And obviously, like we talk about in volleyball a lot, they played up to their opponent's level. Rutgers Newark came in here today, ranked 14th in the country, and for a good reason. And they came in here and played top-notch volleyball. Yeah, I agree. Definitely, they definitely had focus. They were um, definitely here to play today. But I love it when the Knights play like that because I think they have more fun and it's more fun for everyone to watch involved and everyone involved. Absolutely, it's more fun for the players, more fun for the coaches, more fun for the fans, it's just more fun in general. And so with that, the Knights move to a six and one conference record, still in second place behind Juniata. They have another conference game tomorrow, the last home game of the year here at Knight Arena against Keene University, another conference opponent. And like we mentioned before, Marion, a lot of conference implications with that one. If the Knights are able to win that one, they would match Juniata's conference record and theoretically have the head-to-head -head advantage. And so they theoretically, again, be able to have home court advantage in the conference tournament. So we'll have to see how that shakes out. But again, we'll have the game here on Knights Broadcasting tomorrow at 1 p.m. against Keene University. And on behalf of myself, Dawson Wiedrich, and Marion Gowdy, we thank you so much for tuning into this presentation of Knights Athletics here on Knights Broadcasting. Good night. God bless and go Knights.